Alcoholics. Just got down here to Fort Lauderdale, took the train down from Boynton Beach, and uh, you know, my flight is at, I think around like 8.30 tonight, Spirit Airlines to uh, Newark Airport. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna hop around, maybe fish some lakes, ponds, maybe fish one canal that could have some snook in it, and uh, see what happens. It's gonna be a little challenging. I mean, I'm all packed up for the most part, but um, you know, it'll probably take me like 10, 15 minutes to get set up. There's a lake that's like over in that, like, I don't know, on the other side of the tracks. We're gonna try and jump over there first. It's like a really clean water lake, and uh, there might be peacocks in there. I know there's some largemouths, so that's a good place to start. So it's like one o'clock in the afternoon right now. Beautiful weather out here. Ugh. Probably about 75, 80 degrees. Some nice dry heat, low humidity. And uh, you know, right now up in Jersey, they just had a huge snowstorm and it's like 30 degrees. So I'm really not excited about going home tonight. I actually tried to, uh, you know, pick another day to fly home or like reschedule it, but Spirit wasn't working with me. They wanted to charge me extra. So uh, we're flying home tonight and uh, we're gonna try this pond here. Uh, I fished here last year or like the year before, caught some largemouth out of here and this water is like crystal clear. You know, maybe there's gonna be some peacocks in it. That'd be pretty cool. All right, let's see what we can find. I'm gonna start off just with a little extra app. This water is ridiculously colored. It's like turquoise, tropical water. Oh, just got hit. Let's try moving along the bank a little bit. Water is extremely low. Oh, this is thick mud here. All right, yellow. Oh no, that was bad. Jesus, man, look at that. Well, good thing I have my luggage with me and uh, another set of shoes and clean socks. This stuff here looked solid. Didn't look like I was gonna sink in because of these reeds that I could step on, but I guess I hit a soft spot. Might as well just get my shoe wet. clean water actually clean my shoes off like that not too bad my feet were hot anyway I can't go fishing without getting a little dirty there's one right there fish on oh decent not not too bad oh get out of the grass no 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 Look at that guy, he's got like some wounds on him. Looks like something tried to eat him, maybe an alligator, maybe a bird. Skinny fish too. I'm seeing like an unhealthy amount of really small bass. So that's probably why that bass was so skinny. I really hope there's some peacocks in here. At least then we could have like a little bit of a change up or even some gar, something other than these little micro bass. There's like 40 little micro bass right here. Oh, geez, man, just got smashed. <laughs> Crazy largemouth right there. Not too bad. I mean, hey, it's better than just sitting in the airport falling asleep, you know? Oh, my gosh, these savage little guys. A little dinker. This lake is loaded with fish this size in here. Like, everywhere you look, you just see these little guys. Oh, that guy crushed it. A little bigger one, too. A little bigger. Yeah, solid, man. Easy, buddy, easy. These Florida bass are 10 times more wild than New Jersey fish or northern fish. Look at that beauty. Oh, yeah. Bluegill. What are you doing? Even the bluegills down here are more aggressive. Sorry, little buddy. Awesome colors, right?
Now they're on. Jesus. Whoa. Solid action. A lot of little guys though. Probably gonna give it like another five, 10 minutes. And then I think we're gonna pull out Google Maps and uh, start searching for another spot to go. I really wanna try and catch one more snook before we leave. So there's some canals that are like connected to the intercoastal that probably will have some snook. Gonna drain out the socks, look at this here. Oh yeah, lots of water. All right, let's take a look here, see where we want to go. I pinned a couple locations that were close by within like walking distance, say like 20 minutes. And this one right here, it's just like a bridge that goes over a canal that's connected to the intercoastal. Has a lot of like back eddy areas, structure. You know, we're just gonna pin it and we're gonna go. 18 minute walk, not too bad. Giving me plenty of time to dry my shoes. Guys, spot number two, we're gonna try and uh, rig up with uh, the Tidemaster 4000 shield. And we're gonna put that lighter at ta tackle rod away and uh, fish this canal here. It's not a lot of open areas, but this was the closest canal to the train station that I could walk to in 18, 20 minutes. And uh, it doesn't look too bad. And you know, we, got, we definitely got some current, so that, that could be good. And uh, it's midday, it's 3 p.m. So it's not like the, the best time to try and catch snook, but uh, maybe if we're lucky with some of these overhanging trees and mangroves that are kind of like going down in the water, there could be some snook hiding up in there. And uh, there's also like another bridge, a bridge down there. We could try that bridge, that might be pretty good. And uh, yeah, we got you know a little less than a couple hours to just catch a snook. You know, we're not looking for a ton of them. We're just looking to catch a snook or maybe even some jacks, but see what happens. So we're gonna start off just a little saltwater bass assassin. You know, typical stuff that usually a snook would love to hit. Anything? This bridge looks really good, but there is very little water underneath here. Seems like the tide's going out still. A lot of boat traffic here probably like a better location of fish like early in the morning or like right before dark midday snook we're trying it but i don't know if it's gonna happen all right i think that's about it fish for about an hour here didn't really see anything except for like a few mullet and a puffer fish and uh, the airport is like right over there that's why it's like so loud here i don't know if you guys can hear the noise but uh, i'd say we go over there and just like check out some planes i don't know the planes are more intriguing and interesting than trying to catch some of these fish that aren't here. All right, guys, so couldn't get a snook. Not even like a jack or anything, but so that's all right. At least we gave it a shot. And uh, you know, that canal I was fishing is, hold on. Pretty loud. So uh, that canal I'm fishing is uh, right next to the airport. And uh, you know, I called it quits. You know, it's not really much going on. The tide is like really, really low. And uh, only got probably about an hour left to, uh, you know, walk back to the train station, maybe get a bite to eat, a drink, and then take the shuttle over to the other side of the airport so I can get to my terminal and then uh, catch my flight at 8.30 p.m. And right now it's like almost five, five o'clock. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, you know, hopefully I can get back down here and make some more Florida videos, but uh, I kind of wanted to just go over my uh, travel rod setup just for you guys if you're, you know, gonna be traveling and wanna bring some fishing equipment. Uh, you know, I started, with uh, this first rod here. Like this was my first travel rod that I got like a couple years ago. 
And this is my St. Croix Tidemaster, seven foot six, medium power, fast action spinning rod. And I love using this because it's great for like inshore and then say if you're doing like freshwater fishing for like bigger fish or you're like flipping grass or something like down here in Florida, you're catching some big largemouth. This is a, a perfect rod for catching really big largemouth. And then if you want to go inshore and do a little saltwater fishing, it's perfect for snook, redfish, trout, and stuff like that. And um, you know, I, today I paired it with this Tsunami 4000 and I got this reel down here because I was looking for something a little bit better than what I already had. And uh, on this rod, I always had the Pen Battle 2 2500. <laughs> it's pretty cool. And uh, the Pen Battle 2 just never really uh, lasted the test of time. I think it just got too much salt in it, too much abuse, and uh, caught too many fish. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I took it apart many times, cleaned it, put it back together, and it just doesn't seem like it's, you know, as smooth as it used to be or when it, you know, when it was brand new or a year or two old. But uh, the 4000 Shield, you know, great reel, caught a ton of fish on it this trip. And uh, I knew I was getting something pretty good for 100 bucks because I already have the 6000 Shield. And the 6000 Shield, I've dunked many times in the surf, going for striped bass, bluefish. And uh, that reel is still freaking co uh, cooking. You know, it's not a Van Stahl or any other, you know, heavier duty, um, you know, surf reel, but uh, it's still a, you know, great reel for the price. And uh, my other rod, which I got uh, this spring, this is my St. Croix triumph and i got it this spring for my europe fishing trip or not well it wasn't a fishing trip it was like a family vacation i called it a fishing trip but anyway this is a perfect rod setup because it's four pieces fits in this little bag and then it's perfect to fit in your backpack or your carry-on and uh, when i was in europe i liked having this rod because i was doing a lot of freshwater fishing for like pike xander perch and uh, you know if we were walking around amsterdam or just some random town it was so easy just to pull this out rig it up with my pen battle 2 1000 which is a great reel for freshwater and uh, i was able to get on some fish in five ten minutes so um you know these are my travel you know rod setups and this was the rod i was using to catch those large mouth before but uh, anyway hope you guys enjoyed this video and all of my other florida videos don't forget to like this and subscribe and uh, I got about an hour left until my, you know, I got to head to the airport or so. So I'm probably going to get a bite to eat, watch some more planes take off and land. And then uh, I'm going to get out of here. But uh, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And never forget, live to fish, fish to live. And I'll see you guys in the next one.